Hi everyone, I am Vishikesh Channel. Today I am going to show you an experiment known as imploding can or crushing can experiment. The equipment needed are an empty can, a large bowl filled with cold water, a pair of tongs and a source of heat. Now take the can and fill about one third of the can with water. Use the tongs and heat it until steam comes. As you just saw, this is the product of our experiment. Now you might be wondering, how did this happen? Well, it's really simple. You see, liquid exits pressure on all sides of the can. And when we heated the can, the water particles present inside the can vaporized into water vapor in the form of steam. And when we dunk the can into cold water, the corners of the water condensed the water vapor into, into water particles in the form of water drops whose pressure is significantly lesser than the pressure applied by the water vapor. As you know there is a pressure all around us. This, this pressure is known as atmospheric pressure. As of now the atmospheric pressure is far greater than the pressure applied on the can by the water, water particles. As nature wants all pressure to be equal, there is a sudden, the, sorry, there is a sudden and while the break towards the center of the can, equalizing the atmospheric pressure and the pressure applied on the can by the water particles. This phenomenon is known as implosion. Hope you enjoyed it and thank you for your time. Good morning. I am the Jeshna. Today I am going to do a simple experiment on dispersion of light. What is dispersion? Dispersion is meant by the splitting of light into its seven constituent colors. So, which are the seven constituent colors of white light? They are violet, indigo, blue, yellow, green, orange, and red. So, how can we do refraction and dispersion of light? By using an object called as prism is the easiest method to refract and disperse white light. So, what is meant by a prism? Prism is meant, is meant or defined as a three-dimensional object with two identical and parallel faces and three flat surfaces. Place a prism on the path of white light. When light enters into the prism, it refracts and bends towards the base of the prism. Inside the prism, white light splits into its seven constituent colors. The cause of dispersion of white light containing seven colors have different wavelength. The prism deviates different amount in different wavelength of light. Spectrum contains seven colors. At the top, red and bottom, violet. Most deviation takes place in the violet than in red because red light have more wavelength than violet. The reason for this is wavelength is inversely proportional to the deviation. Hello everybody, I am Rashi Nofal from class 8S. I am here to do an experiment about effect of force. In our daily life, we see many applications of force like closing of a door, beating of a drum, etc. But what is force? 
force is an act of push or pull that changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body. The effect of force depends on two major parts. That they are magnitude of the force applied and the area of contact. I am here to do an experiment about how effective force depends on the magnitude of force applied. For this, uh, I have I am using two bricks, a container, and soft mud. The procedure is: first, we take a brick and put it inside and place it inside the mud. You can clearly see that the measurement of the uh, top line of the brick is about 13 cm but if it put place another brick on top of the uh, uh, lower brick we will see we can see that the measurement of the top line of the uh, brick now is about 11.5 cm this means that the brick takes the space uh, uh, space displaced by the uh, soft mud uh, due to the effective force. Now by this, we can call Hi everybody, I am Anandu Vajinapal of class 8. Today I am going to show you how we can measure the volume of an irregular solid using a measuring cylinder. The materials required are a measuring cylinder, a piece of string, an irregular solid and a glass of water. First, we have to pour this water into the measuring cylinder and note the winter point that is the initial level of water V1. Then, we have to tie the string into an irregular solid and slightly immerse it in the measuring cylinder without touching the walls of the container or the bottom. Now you can see there is a change in the level of water. That the final level of water V2. The volume of the stone is the difference between the final level and the initial level. That is V2 minus V1. Thank you. Good evening everyone. Respected teachers and my dear friends. I am Akshita Dirayna of Class 8S. I am going to demonstrate an experiment to verify the Archimedes principle by using an Eureka cap. Archimedes of Syracuse was a Greek philosopher, physicist, engineer, inventor and an astronomer. He was born in 287 BC and died at the age of 75 years. Some of the major inventions of Archimedes include the Archimedes principle, the Archimedes screw, the Archimedes number, the Archimedes palm, the measurement of the circle and the value of the pipe. He became famous by the discovery of the law of hydrostatics, which is also known as Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle states that when a body is fully or partially immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward thrust, which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. It can be illustrated with the help of an Eureka cap. It is also known as an overflow tub. An Eureka can is actually a container with a spout near its neck. It got its name from the famous physicist Archimedes. When he apparently stepped onto the water, the sum of the volume of the water in the bathtub overflowed, which is as equal to the weight of the body part which is immersed in the liquid. By finding out that, he ran to the streets shouting Eureka, which means I found it. So, going to the experiment, the aim of my experiment to, is to verify the Archimedes principle by using a Eureka cap. 
So the materials that are used here includes a breaker can, a measuring cylinder, a stone, and a spring belt. Now the procedure. The first step is to fill the Eureka can with water and let some of the water drain through the spout into the measuring cylinder. step. It is to measure the weight of the stone by using the spring belt. It has been found that the weight is 40 gram. Now the step 3. It is used to measure the weight of the irregular solid that is the stone in water. That the weight of the regular solid is 30 gram and also when I immerse it in the water some of the water overflow through the measuring cylinder. Here we have an apparent loss of weight. So this is the weight of stone in air minus the weight of stone in water. That is 40 minus 30 which is equal to 10. We have also obtained some of the water in the measuring cylinder which is 10 centigram. That is also written here. So this means that the apparent loss of weight is equal to the volume of water displaced. And thus the Archimedes principle is verified. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Kamala Priya Kishore from 8th R. This year, my project for physics virtual project presentation is Dispersal of light through a glass prism. It was first discovered by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666. He proved that white light is composed of rainbow colors by allowing sunlight to pass through a prism. Due to the shape of the prism, light with different wavelengths refract by different amounts so they separate. The light emerging from the prism was projected onto a screen and Newton was able to see the range of colors in the visible spectrum. Aim of this project is to show dispersal of light into the seven band of colors. Dispersion phenomena is the process of separation of white light into different colors. We all know the wavelength of the light is inversely proportional to the deviation in the path of the light. We know in the colors with geo, the red is having the highest wavelength while violet will be having the least wavelength. We can conclude that the violet will be deviating the most as it has the least wavelength whereas the red color, which is having the highest wavelength, will disperse the least. To demonstrate this activity, we require a light source, in this case a torch, a glass prism and a white screen, in this case a white wall. When we pass the light through the prism, it disperses into the seven colors. The light source I am using for this project is a torch. When the light from the torch passes through the prism, we can see the seven colors of the rainbow reflecting on the wall. Thank you. Hi, I'm Abhishek of class 8. Today, I'm going to show you how to prepare land black from oil. The items we need to prepare this project are oil, matchbox, 
a lamp some cotton wicks and a plate so we can start our experiment so first of all we can pour some oil into the lamp and we should place a cotton wick and we can lighten the lamp so now we can cover the smoke from the lamp using a plate This is the pure lamp black obtained during this process. You can see that. The lamp black has many uses. I will explain it one by one. Lamp black is used to make shoe polish, carbon paper, printer sink etc so this is a simple experiment everyone can try this at home thank you hello teachers my name is adit landru lopez from class 8b here i am going to do a presentation on the topic chemical reactions there are four types of chemical reactions combination reaction decomposition reaction displacement reaction and double displacement reaction here i have taken combination reaction as the concept for my topic combination reaction is a reaction in which two or more substances combine to form one singular compound for example the burning of magnesium in air procedure take the magnesium ribbon and hold it under the flame of a candle with the test tube holder once it starts and completes burning take the residue in a beaker and add 5 ml of water into it mix it thoroughly and then dip a red litmus into the solution the materials needed for this experiment are a magnesium ribbon a test tube holder a beaker and some red litmus first we take the magnesium ribbon and put it in a test holder and then we hold it out onto the candle once it starts to burn we can put it into the beaker we then put it into the beaker and pour some water into it then mix it thoroughly this is the original red litmus and this is the result what happened when i dipped it into the solution here we observe that magnesium burns with a dazzling white light and then a white residue of magnesium oxide is formed when we mix this uh, residue with the water and then dip a red litmus into it the red litmus changes into blue color but the blue litmus retains its color and stays blue from this we can understand that the burning of magnesium ribbon is a combination reaction and that magnesium oxide is a basic oxide it can be chemically expressed as 2 mg plus o2 is equal to mgo thank you 
Good evening my dear teachers and my fellow classmates. My name is Ananda Patnaban A and I'm from class 8B. Today I'm going to show you my chemistry virtual presentation. So my project is about neutralization reaction. So what is neutralization reaction? A neutralization reaction is a type of double displacement reaction in which an acid and a base react to form salt and water. So the as you may as all of you may know, a double displacement reaction is a type of is a type of reaction in which two compounds in, in their aqueous solution interchange the ions to form new type of compounds. So neutralization reaction is a type of double displacement reaction. In neutralization reaction, when we uh, we have to add an acid, when an acid and a base react to form salt and water. So this is a so this is a picture of the neutralization reaction. What is acid? An acid is a chemical substance that neutralizes the alkalis, dissolves the metals and it also turns blue litmus red. An acid also eats hydronium ion when dissolved in water. So any chemical substances that can neutralize alkalis, dissolve some, some, dissolve some, some types of metal and can turn lead, blue litmus red, it is known as acid. An acid also an acid can yield hydronium ions when dissolved in water. What is base? A base is a metallic hydroxide or a metallic oxide that reacts with acid to form salt and water. An alkali is a base soluble in water. A base turns red litmus blue. So a base is a metallic hydroxide and oxide that reacts with acid to form salt and water. So an alkali is a type of base that is soluble in water. A base can turn red litmus blue. Salts. Salts are compounds formed by the composition of an acid and a base. The compound formed when a base and the acid react is known as salt. So this is some pictures of different kinds of salt. <coughs> Examples of neutralization reaction. Reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. When a solution of sodium hydroxide reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, sodium chloride, also known as salt and water, are formed. So this is, big, this is the equation for the uh, reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Reaction between copper oxide and sulfuric acid. Copper oxide reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to give copper sulfate. Copper oxide plus H2SO4. So this is the equation. <coughs> when we add copper oxide to dilute sulfuric acid, we will get higher copper sulfate and water. So this is a picture. We <coughs> is a picture of a reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. And this is a picture of the reaction between copper oxide and sulfuric acid. So some practical applications of neutralization reaction. In digestion, our stomach produces hydrochloric acid which helps the digestion of food. It also kills the harmful bacteria that enter our stomach uh, when, when we are eating for food. During indigestion, the stomach produces too much hydrochloric acid which can cause pain and irritation. The excessive acid can be neutralized with the help of antacids. Uh, milk of magnesia or magnesium hydroxide is an antacid that is recommended by doctors. It is a mild base. Sodium bicarbonate by baking, so also known as baking soda, is also used for this purpose. So this is some pictures of the antacids. So this is the milk of magnesia or magnesium hydroxide and this is a baking soda. Soil treatments. Plants require mostly neutral soil for their healthy growth. Soils in regions containing chalk and limestone are usually alkaline. Soils in regions containing uh, sandstone, clay and peat are usually acidic. The acidic of a uh, soil can be reduced by liming the soil. This is carried out by adding calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide or calcium carbonate. Or calcium carbonate. All these substances are basic in nature, uh, basic in nature and reduce the acidity of the soil. If the soil is too alkaline, then it's alkaline. 
then it's alkalinity can be reduced by adding decaying organs fat of manure or compost which contains acidic materials so plants are mostly uh, neutral soil for the healthy growth soils in region containing chalk and loam are usually very big has uh, more has more alkalinity the alkalinity is more so we can reduce the alkalinity of a soil by adding manure or compost and we can also uh, reduce so we can sorry so reduce reducing alkalinity we can reduce the alkalinity of soil by adding manure or compost and we can reduce the acidity of a soil by adding uh, by liming the soil so this is a picture of the liming a uh, farmer liming the soil thank you good morning to one and all today i am going to show the displacement reaction between iron nails and copper sulfate the aim of this experiment is to prove that iron is more reactive than copper the materials required are 100 milliliters of water 5 grams of copper sulfate crystals a pair of iron nails a two beakers and a glass rod first we combine the copper sulfate crystals with the water in order to obtain a copper sulfate solution It appears that the sample of copper sulfate crystals we took contain some impurities. Now, I am going to discard the impurities and pour the copper sulfate solution into another beaker. Here we have obtained a hundred milliliters of copper sulfate solution. Now I'm going to add iron nails to it. In order to showcase this reaction, I have done this experiment yesterday and kept this mixture overnight. Here we can observe that there is obviously a visible change. First, we can notice that the blue color of the copper sulfate solution has changed to a green color of ferrous sulfate solution. We can also observe a lot of reddish brown deposits on the iron nails and this is copper. Now, what can we conclude from this? If we look at this equation, we see that iron plus copper sulfate will give you ferrous sulfate plus copper. This means that iron is more reactive than copper, causing the iron to replace the copper ion from the copper sulfate, which leaves excess copper which forms the residue. Thus, we can prove that this is a displacement reaction. Thank you. Good morning all. I am Manish Devnaya of Class ETS and I am here to present my project on the topic Organic pH Testers. So let us move on to the fir first topic without any further ado. So what exactly is this pH? As most of us probably know, 
It is a scale used to measure the acidity or basicity of a solution. It stands for potential of hydrogen or power of hydrogen. It basically works by measuring the concentration of the H plus or hydronium ions in a solution. So the next topic is pH indicator. Basically pH indicator is a compound added to a solution to measure the pH value on a visual scale. Some pH, in, uh, uh, some pH indi indicators are formed on a, organically and some of them may even be in our garden. The first example of organic pH indicator is the anthocyanin family of compounds. Anthocyanins are compounds which give color to, to leaves, fruits and flowers. Some of these anthocyanin compounds have the ability to detect a change and a change in pH level and change their color accordingly. A good example of anthocyanins which possess this property is the one found in red cabbage called flavin. The next one is a very popular pH indicator which we may have heard of, litmus. It is a pH indicator made from a mixture of lichen which is a plant found underground. Litmus papers and solutions have become a very popular pH indicator worldwide and have, and have found use in the laboratory. The word litmus comes from the old Nordic word for colored moss. Next up is turmeric. We will have heard of turmeric because it is an extremely popular spice. However, this spice can also act as a pH indicator which turns yellow in an acid and, and, and a reddish brown color in alkaline substances. So we can see that pH is very important because because it is used to press, uh, uh, measure the strength of acids and alkalis. For example, uh, the, the, the acid which is found in our stomach is classified as a strong acid. And, and bleach is classified as a strong alkaline. So what I am going to do on the basis of these pH indicators is make a, a homemade pH indicator from red cabbage. I extract juice from red cabbage and add it to various substances like soap, vinegar, etc. to see how it reacts and how it changes color. So this is basically what I am going to do. By this project, I intend to conclude that chemistry exists everywhere. Thank you. Greetings everyone, I am Nikia Thomas John of Class 8Q. Today, I am going to differentiate acids and bases present in everyday items. I am going to be using litmus paper as an indicator. Now, let's see the two types of litmus paper. These are the two types of litmus paper, they are red and blue. Now. Litmus paper is a water soluble material made by the dyes extracted from lichens. Now let's see the change in litmus paper when dipped in an acid. This is an acid, it's hydrochloric acid. Let's take a red litmus paper and dip it in an acid. We can see there is no change in the color of the red litmus paper. Now let's take a blue litmus paper and dip it in the acid. We can see the color of the litmus paper changes from blue to red color. Now, let's take a base sodium hydroxide. Now, take a blue, blue litmus paper and dip it in base. There is no change in the color of the blue litmus paper. Let's take a red litmus paper and dip it in the base. The color changes from red to blue. Now, let's move on to the everyday items I have taken. Lemon, 
സോപ്പ് കേഡ് ഹാൻഡ് വാഷ് ഗ്ലൂസ്ബെറി ഡിഷ് വാഷ് ബേക്കിംഗ് സോഡ ഓറഞ്ച് ടൊമാറ്റോ ഗ്രേപ്സ് Now, let's take a litmus paper and dip it on each of them. Now let's see, see the change in the litmus paper. Now let's see, change in lemon. When we le- in lemon, when we put the blue litmus paper, it changes to red color. But when the red litmus paper is put in the lemon, it does not have any change in the color. Now in soap, the red litmus changes to blue color. Because it changes to blue color, but the blue litmus paper does not have any change. now in curd the blue litmus paper changes to red color but the red litmus paper doesn't have any change now let's see soap in soap the blue litmus paper changes to red color but the red litmus paper doesn't have any change dish wash dish wash the blue litmus changes to red color but the red litmus doesn't have any change baking soda the blue litmus pa- litmus paper doesn't have any change but we can see that the red litmus paper has changes to blue color orange in orange the red litmus paper doesn't have any change in the color but the blue litmus paper changes to red color grapes grapes the red litmus paper isn't ha- doesn't have any change but the blue changes to red color tomato the red litmus paper doesn't have any change but we can see that the blue litmus paper changes to red color now let's see the change in gooseberry now we will look into gooseberry we can see there is no change in color of red litmus paper let's take a blue litmus paper the blue litmus paper changes to red color orange grapes tomatoes are acidic in nature whereas soap and baking soda are basic in nature we can see that most of the fruits and vegetables are acidic in nature but soap and baking soda are basic in nature thank you good evening all myself nikeshri from aja today i'm here to demonstrate the reaction between an acid and a base that is a neutralization reaction so first of all what is a neutralization reaction A neutralization reaction is a type of double displacement reaction where an acid and a base react together to form a salt and water. So, for this experiment, I here I have taken dilute hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide solution, phenolphthalein solution that's the indicator, a beaker, a pipette, two test tubes. red and blue litmus paper a clamping stand and a beaker so here i have taken 5 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid solution 
So I'm go next I'm going to add the phenolphthalein solution that's the indicator. So next, I'm just going to turn this urine before that I'm just stirring it. So next. Hello everyone, my name is Nivede. I am of class 9S, roll number 17. Today, I am going to do an experiment based on the topic water of crystallization. Water of crystallization means the fixed number of water molecules that are in loose combination with one molecule of a salt. The salt which contain water molecules is called hydrated salt. Now I am going to do an experiment to show the presence of water in hydrated copper sulphate. Now I am taking a boiling tube. I am taking some copper sulphate with a spoon and putting it to the test tube. Now I took a cork with one hole and put a straw in it and closed the boiling tube with the cork. Now I am holding the boiling tube with a test tube holder. Now I am taking a spirit lamp and lighted it. Now I am taking a beaker with cold water and put another tube in the cold water. Now I am heating the copper sulphate. It's slowly changing to the white color. That means the water in it has evaporated and is collected in another test tube and condensed. When the water is evaporated completely, it completely turns to white color. Now I am adding some water to this and the copper sulphate regains its blue color. Hence we can prove that water is present in copper sulphate. Hello, I am Pranav Sharath of Standard 8P. Today I am going to show how charcoal acts as a decolorizing agent. The materials taken are a road, a filter paper, funnel inverted in the beaker and two beakers, beaker 1 and beaker 2 and an act finely powdered activated charcoal. Let's move to the procedure. The first procedure is add some activated charcoal to the in color solution. I am adding 2 to 3 spoons of activated charcoal. Now I am going to mix it well. And now I am going to stir it well. Now I am going to pour the solution in the funnel with the filter paper. Slowly. If we need, we can uh, stir it with the, the, the straw. Now I mixed fairly powdered activated charcoal and blue ink solution and pour it into a funnel and inside a filter paper and we can see that the solution is, the dark color solution is becoming clear.
can compare these two. This is the filtrate solution and this is the charcoal filled with ink solution. This shows that charcoal is used as a decolorizing agent. Thank you. I'm going to prepare lamp black from mustard oil. So here I have a lamp or dia with mustard oil in it and a cotton wick. So now I am going to light it. And we want to hold a plate uh, just above this lamp. So when the uh, wick is lighted, we can see a sooty flame is produced from which a black powdery substance is uh, deposited on this plate. And this black powdery substance is known as lamp black. When you look around in nature, you find many amazing creations. Among these, the flowers easily capture your attention. So is the case with bees and butterflies. The ultimate aim is to maintain the ecosystem by means of pollination. So why not spare a thought for the wonderfully designed process? I am Anakha Sainish of Class 8 Test presenting before you the chemistry of reproductive parts and flower, biology of fertilization, and physics of pollination. Here is a diagram which shows the parts of a flower, parts uh, of a flower, in which it, there is a detailed structure of gynoecium, stone stigma, style, ovary, and ovule, and androecium with anther and filament. As shown here. A an anther is bilobed and has four pollen sacs. Each pollen grain looks like this and a mature pollen grain uh, with pollen tube uh, looks like this. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of a flower. It can happen with nature via wind, water etc or even with the help of insects, birds or even animals. Here you can see pollen attached to the body of honeybee. Pollination is of three types. Autogamy when it occurs within the same flower. Gynogamy when it occurs between two flowers but of same plant. Allogamy when it occurs between two flowers of different plants. After successful fertilization, ovule turn into seeds and ovary turn into the fruit. It is fascinating to understand that the color and shape of the petal is designed for a purpose. As for science education, we are in pursuit for such Secrets of Nature. Thank you.